what it's like to live with a degenerative disease. Imagine if your body waged war on itself instead of being an efficient machine designed to fight off any sign of illness. That's the reality for the 2.3 million people all over the world living with multiple sclerosis MS, a degenerative disease that can cause symptoms ranging from double vision to searing physical pain. One of those people is Lida Imley, 44, an Austin-based artist who creates murals that represent a powerful message. MS isn't going to stop her from living. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in June 2012. I had symptoms like numbness in my arms and legs and pain radiating down my arm, but I thought that was because of my ridiculous lifestyle of jumping on freeway overpasses and billboards to paint murals. Then the pain started progressing, and I was incapacitated for months at a time. I finally went to the hospital when half of my tongue went numb one day. The doctors there did an MRI, and that's when they found the scars on my brain that signaled MS. It was a blow because I just suffered from uterine and cervical cancer and had only been cancer-free for three years. What is multiple sclerosis? Imagine that your nervous system looks like an iPhone charging cord. The nerves are the colorful wires on the inside, and the protective white coating on the outside is called myelin. When you have MS, that white coating is disappearing. As the wires, or the nerves, start to show through, your white blood cells act like a cat that would chew on that iPhone cord. They attack the myelin, thinking it's a foreign body act of flu or AIDS or cancer. Your body is essentially destroying itself. Every time the myelin opens up and white blood cells attack that part of your nervous system, it leaves a little scar. That's what multiple sclerosis means, any scars. Even if the myelin were to regenerate, the scars are permanent. The damage is done. Some people have the myelin disappearing in just their spines, and some have it disappearing in their brains that I happen to have it in both places. And although some people have relapsing remitting MS, where symptoms come and go, others, like me, have the more quickly degenerating type. You just continue to unravel. I don't have ups and downs or moments where I have no symptoms. My MS is always getting worse. What my MS is like now my pain has intensified since I was diagnosed. It feels like somebody is running a very sharp scalpel down my fingertips, arms, and legs. It feels like there are fire ants between my gums and my teeth. It feels like the insides of my ankles are cracking with each step. Sometimes I even have those scalpel lines of pain on my face. It's not like someone's pressing hard or like if you had Edward Sisordians for a boyfriend and he was trying to hug you. I use a cane because my right foot drags due to a symptom called foot drop, and my vision is getting very blurry. Every couple of months, the pain increases. I'm at the upper limit of any pain medicine I can have because if I took more, it would be too much for my weight and kill me. I just have to suck it up. There are people in other countries who get their hands cut off for stealing bread to feed their families. Who am I to complain about my pain? The medicine we get is MS patients isn't the good stuff. Opiates don't help with nerve pain, and there aren't any drugs for progressive MS, only relapsing remitting. As my pain gets worse, doctors will change the medications I'm taking. At one point, I was up to 14 pills a day. For example, I take methocarbamol, a muscle relaxant that keeps my back and hands from spasming. I'm already at the point where I have to tie my paintbrushes to my hands with shoelaces if I'm painting for more than an hour. I also take some Malta, which is an antidepressant. I'm pretty upbeat, but apparently when you're taking as many pain meds as you can, it enhances them. To balance out the sedative effect of the drugs, I got a Keurig and drink about 10 cups of coffee a day. One of the worst things about MS is that when you hear the term, you immediately think of an old man in a wheelchair. There's no face of the disease that shows any hope. I'm trying to change that with every bit of energy I have left. No matter how much pain I'm in or how much I'm suffering, I'm trying to paint these murals to give a different representation of the disease. When I tell people I have MS, they do this head tilt and say things like, W, you're so young. I know they're trying to be kind, but I don't want people to automatically pity those with mischanging perceptions to fund my MS murals.
The National MS Society applied for grants from Genzyme Corporation, a pharmaceutical company that makes a lot of MS medicines. I've done four so far, and the goal is to do five or six more in the coming year. The idea of MS is that you're stuck, crippled, blind. That's why my murals always have movement in them. The woman's hair is flowing and has wine to it, and there are birds and stars flying. I want to rebrand this sedentary image we have because we're still alive. The pain we suffer on a daily basis is unbelievable, but everyone I've met in the MS community is incredibly active and positive. I always tell people art can do more than hang tea can help. Just because you get this diagnosis doesn't mean it's over. It wasn't over for me. The best mural I've done in the MS series is in Portland, Oregon shown above. It goes beyond MS and is really about hope. I want it to talk to whatever you feel like you're battling that day. When I was done, hundreds of people wrote their names on it, whether they had MS, had cancer, or knew someone with depression. Because of that, I got to be part of an art project I could never have dreamed of. I'm also in the documentary, PC594. The director, Libby Spears, has been following me around with her company Blueprint Films for the last two years. We originally met when she was hired to film my mural process on a piece I was doing for Gucci's Chime for Change organization, which helps victims of sex trafficking. The movie is in the editing process right now, but we still need funds for filming. You can help support funding by clicking on support on the film's Facebook page. The goal is for it to go to next year's film festivals. It's about what I do part of which is violating Penal Code 594 which bans painting murals on public property. It's also about cancer, political speech, art, being tolerant, and autism, which my 12-year-old daughter, Coco, has. How painting helps me cope I actually didn't paint any MS-related murals until the first one I did this past May. I usually paint about issues like the freedom of Tibet, the lies of people in Haiti, and people all over the world who need more than I do. If I don't paint these murals, Nobody else will. When I seek out people who have less and try to help them, I humble my condition. I can certainly cry in bed and watch the second season of True Detective, which I actually think is pretty good. But whether I do that or get up and go do something, the pain is the same. Just because I'm sick doesn't mean I can't help people who need it. Another one of my favorites murals is one I did on Water Island shown below, which is part of the U.S. Virgin Islands. There's a house there where a lot of slaves had to go to get registered, sold off, and brought to the mainlands of America. On the side of the slave house, I painted a picture of a Maasai woman in her beautiful headdress, showing she's a queen. It was a way of saying she triumphed, the slave house didn't. It's saying, there she is. Her face is important, and she matters. Looking toward the future my prognosis is unknown. Eventually, I won't be able to walk. My doctors have also prepared me to wake up blind at any time, which will be very difficult given that I paint. I don't have an action plan for how I'm going to continue painting when I lose my eyesight, but I'll deal with it when it happens. I tie my brushes to my hands when I need to, I have a cane to help my leg, and my crew steps in to help me finish a mural if I can't do it that day. I'm going to stay on the path of making adjustments when I need to. My plan right now is to do everything I can in the moment. I know MS will take my life, but it's not taking it today. No doctor can give me a time frame. It's not like cancer, where they say you've got a certain number of months left. MS is a mysterious and wild woman. She's temperamental, and I admire her fire. I wish she could apply it elsewhere, but she's my battle. The only way to make the most out of each day I have left is to embrace her. If I'm being honest, the hardest thing about my struggle is my children, Dorothy, 14, and Coco, 12. I love them more than myself. I've devoted my life to them, but I wish they didn't have a sick mom. Everybody should feel like their parents are invincible for as long as possible, and my children were robbed of it early. Their exposure to it has made them tolerant and patient, but I wouldn't wish not having MS for myself, I'd wish not having it for my kids. I appreciate my white blood cells for thinking I have a foreign body. 
I appreciate how hard they're working to save me, even though they're actually killing me. I appreciate the science of it, and I know they're trying desperately to help me. My goal is to stand and paint for as long as possible. There's nothing I can do but paint my story and bring awareness to who we are. Born into an activist family passionate about civil rights, social justice, and equality, Lida Emily's work is infused with a grace parallel to the injustice behind the imagery. She is a cancer survivor and a daily warrior against Missy's issues serve as catalysts for not only her art, but also for her social engagement as a speaker. In 2015, she created four large murals spreading a message of hope to those whose lives are touched by Missy's inspirational murals are located in Los Angeles, Houston, Louisville, and Portland, Oregon. She plans to continue painting the hopeful murals for MS chapters around the globe. Lida Emily is the subject of the documentary PC594, which is currently in production and being directed by Libby Spears. The documentary is an in-depth look at her work as an artist and activist and how they come together in her stunning paintings.